Hi folks, so in this video what we're going to be doing is a question from the 2023 exam paper and it was in the section B part of it and it's based on the topic of intersecting solids or some people call it interpenetration of solids as well. So uh, the question here it says uh, figure B1, okay sorry question B1, a 3D graphic of a desk lamp is shown on the right so we've got a little desk lamp here. The lamp consists of a truncated pentagonal prism and a truncated equilateral triangular prism which intersect each other as shown. So we've kind of got the blue uh, pentagonal prism here and the equilateral triangular prism here as well. Figure B1 shows the incomplete projections of a similar lamp. So we've got the elevation here and the plan B down here. Uh, part A, draw the given plan and elevation. Part B, complete the projections of the, desk, of the desk lamp showing all lines of interpenetration, including all hidden detail. And they tell us as well the scale of the, uh, of the drawing is in one is to two, so we'll have to obviously scale it down. So they give us measurements here, and I'm just going to zoom in on this and apply the scale, and you can see I've it already done. What that basically means, if the scale is 1 to 2, all these measurements, okay, we need to half them, okay? So 80 split in 2 is obviously going to be 40, 100, or 220 split in 2 is 110, 30, 15, 30, 15, uh, 30, that would be 15 there, I don't know why that says 25, apologies, and then 20, 10. Uh, the pentagon at the bottom, you can see the pentagonal prism here at the bottom, that's what we're going to start with. That has the side length of 88, which is going to become 44, and then the length it comes out for the triangular uh, prism is 120, so that's going to go out 60 millimeters. Okay, so um, in completing this drawing, uh, we also have to determine as well, and this is something that a lot of students, especially people who were new to the subject and didn't do junior cycle graphics, when we're getting the Pentagon, which is where we're going to start, we're going to start with the plan view. The exterior angle down here is going to be 72 degrees. Okay, so we're going to do a vertical line 44 millimeters long and then do an angle using our protractor of 72. Now, where does that 72 come from? Any regular polygon, so pentagon, hexagon, octagon, okay, any regular one where all the sides are the same length, every one of them will technically fit inside of a circle, 360 degrees. If you divide the number of sides, which in this case is 5, into 360, it will work out the exterior angle, which in this case is 72. So that angle there is 72, as is this angle if I extend it down the line, 72 as well, okay? If I extended this line on here, the angle in there would be 72 and so on, okay? So that's what we're going to start with there. So in regards to positioning it on our page, uh, my XY line, I'm going to position it roughly about the middle, actually a little bit below. So if this is the middle, I'm going to go a little bit below. I think that'll be appropriate. I'm going to position it. I'm going to do it on the right-hand side as well. So that's going to be my XY line there. And to start my drawing, I'm going to start about here, I think. So just to adjust the camera there so you can see it a little bit better. I'm going to start my line about there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a line 44 millimeters in length. So a vertical line. Just see in there, it comes out 25. Yeah, that's about right. I'm quite happy about there, I think. I'm going to say so. I'll actually come over about here. Okay. So I'm going to measure from there. I'm going to do a line. I'm going to mark it. 44 millimeters from there to there. That's exactly. So I want to be as accurate as I possibly can with this drawn. So that line there I've just done is a vertical line 44 millimeters. Now with these two points, which is the ones I'm going to be measuring my angles from, I want to just extend my lines up and down lightly. I'm going to get my protractor. I'm going to zoom in here now to explain the first one. So from this point here, and the reason you'll see why I extended on my line. I'm going to put the center point of my protractor on it. I'm going to make sure that the zero is resting on the line and likewise with the one below it. Off screen there now, but you can see how my zero is sitting on the guideline that I just did and my center point is on the line I'm measuring from. Now I'm going to read around to 72. So zero all the way around to 72. There's the 72 degrees. I'm going to draw on my line. So there is my side of the pentagon. I'm going to do the exact same with the bottom half now that you've seen how I've done it. So, move around. This time I'm reading from the bottom, so I'm going around this way. So, all the way to 72. Okay, now that I've done that, there's the 72 degrees done. Let's just zoom in there a little bit more so you can see it a bit better on our screen now. Now all the sides are the same length, so once I've kind of got the angle, let's go a bit quicker. So there we go, I take the 44 millimeters on my compass, and I'm simply going to mark that distance out. You could measure it, but the 
because it's just a little bit quicker, I think, if we use the compass. So now I've got three sides, I've got the side to here. Now I'm going to use this point to swing an arc into the space. And this point here to swing an arc into the space. Okay, so all I'm going to do then is I'm going to connect that up there with this one. And likewise with this one. So there's my pentagon in the plan view. Now I have to draw the pentagonal prism in the elevation. And there is a line in the plan vertical like this as well. Okay, now I'm going to project those up, so that'll go up. This one will go up quite high as well. Now if I refer to the drawing, the height of this line here is 80 millimeters. So I'm going to mark it from 8 up as far as 16. Mark 16 there. And this height, this line has a height of 110. So from 8 up as far as 19 would be 110. So there's the 19, and I'm simply going to connect those up. There is the elevation view completed. Now, I'm not going to heavy in anything just yet. Uh, the reason being is because I'm going to come along later on in the question when I know I can 100% heavy in certain portions of it. Okay. So what I've drawn there is the plan of the pentagonal prism and the elevation of the pentagonal prism. We've done that. Now what we have to do is we have to put in the triangular prism that is going to be cutting or penetrating through it. So uh, first of all, I want to note the angle. Uh, if you look down here, it tells us that the distance back to this point here, which is where the angle is coming from, 40 degrees. So I'm going to measure here a distance, not 30, but 15, because it's scale 1 is to 2. I'm going to mark 15 from here and do an angle of 40 degrees to give me that baseline there. Somewhere along that line then, I'm going to draw a triangle. And the length of the triangle, now it says 80, but if we apply the scale, it's going to be 40. And it's equilateral, so I'll use my compass to draw the triangle and then project the other guys on and get an elevation and then bring the points down to flat. So, from this point right here, I'm going to measure a distance of 15 millimeters. So there's my 15. Once again, I'm going to go to my protractor. I use the protractor with the T-square. Make sure the zero is resting on the line. Bring the center point over to the mark that I want to mark from. I'm going to mark a distance of, or sorry, not a distance, an angle. 40 degrees. Made my little mark there. Now I'm going to check that guy out. Okay, there is the 40 degrees. Now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit so we can see that a little better on our screen once again. Now that I've done that, okay, I have the angle that I require. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in my equilateral triangle up here. Now, just want to refer to this. You can see here from the edge of the pentagon in the plan view, it goes out a distance there, 120, but when I apply the scale, that will be 60. So I am going to put that in, and that will kind of dictate to me. So I'll do a line in my plan. And that line in my plan, I'm going to measure out a distance of 60 millimeters. So I've marked the 60 there. I'm now I'm going to do a vertical line up. I'll do it down, send it down a little bit. And when I do that vertical line up, that will show me kind of where that's going to be up here. And now this is the space that I'm going to work my equilateral triangle inside of. Okay, so I'm just going to extend that line on a little bit further. Make sure I'm accurate. So there's the line. And I know I want a triangle length 40. Okay, so out here, just thinking about there. I'll start it right about here. So at that point there, I'm going to measure 40 millimeters. So from four as far as eight. There's the four, there's the eight. And I'm going to get my compass now, because it's equilateral, all the sides will be the same length. Simply take my compass there, 40 millimeters on my compass, like that, and swing an arc. And I'll swing an arc from this point, where the two arcs cross each other, gives me the third point on the triangle. And that is the first thing I actually can heavy in. So I just like to go over it in a marker, just for the video demonstration purposes. There we have our equilateral triangle. That is the general shape, if we were looking straight at it, that it's going to have. 
Okay, so there's our equilateral triangle. I will come back and do a bit of labeling on that in a minute. But now all I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of sliding sets first. So parallel to the 40 degree line, because that's the line, that's the way it's projecting. Project that back. All the way there like that. That's the top point. And now I'm going to put in the distances that are required for these measurements here. So I've already measured back 15, so I'm going to mark back another 10. And then you can see it goes up a certain height. Now I'm not sure if we'll be able to figure out that just yet. I actually will, sorry, it's back 15 as well, apologies. So from this bottom one, after we measured out the original 15, I'm going to measure back another 10. Now from that mark, I'm just going to do a line up. And on that line up then, I'm going to mark out 15 millimeters from that line. So I'll actually just mark it from the bottom here again. So 15 millimeters. So that would actually have been from there. There was the 10. If I add on another 5. Now what's going to be helpful about that is when I draw that up, that's going to give me that point right there. So you can see the point I was trying to search for, which was this one here. So by marking back 15, if I just did a line up, I found that one. Okay. This guy here is going to go down to here. Right, now I'm going to start heading in certain portions of it. So I often like, as best I can, I'll only heavy it in until I get to the actual object itself. Because I'm not sure of any of the penetrating lines just yet. So there's that side of it. And then I've got this side up here that I'm going to start doing now. And there was an additional height from the top. From here, it goes up another 15 to 30. One is to two, up 15, so I'll see a line across. So from that line there, I'm going to do a little line up from 13. So it's 13 on it. I'm going to go up 1.5 to 14.5. That line will go across. There we go. Okay, so I've been in this portion now. Just the outside part. So there's that portion heavy in and work that down to my plan view actually. So now that I've got that. Project this point down, that point, and also have a point up here. Not sure exactly if I'll be needing it just yet. I'll have points down here, so from the top point. Get the right lines down, and then that one has been brought down already. Okay, and then in regards to the width, we'll have to determine that. And I've got the 60 put in. I can actually find that point there. That's helpful. That will actually tell me this one. And then that's going off like a triangle there. And I'm just to continue that line on. Now I know it goes into there. So that face. That will actually be helpful here. It will be going into there. I'm not going to heavy it in just yet. As it comes down to here, I'll just heavy in that much. So that'll be part of the explanation. Okay, now the question is, how wide is it here? Now we have to determine that. So I'm actually going to come up to my elevation to be able to complete this bit down here. And I'm going to label, uh, sorry, label the um, triangle. So if I said this point here was one, this point here was two, and this point here was three. Okay, so I've got three points on my triangle. Therefore, the top point, okay, the point at the top is actually the number two. So therefore that has to be number two now how am i going to work out the distance out from two out to three and out to one i actually have to just take what are going to be the widths of it so the easiest way to do that okay is i need the widths of it so from here i'm just going to rotate myself square perpendicular to that line so from the number two right into the middle okay now because that line was 40 already it should work out that it's 20 and 20 Perfect. So you'll see the distance there. So my distance from 2, so if you imagine 2 was here, my distance from 2 
to 1 is 20, and 2 to 3 is 20. So all I'm going to do is, from 2, I'm going to mark out to the 1 and out to the 3. From 2, I'm going to mark out 20 millimeters to number 1, and 20 millimeters to number 3. My line across, my line across. And once again, if that's 2, the 1's going to be on the left, 3's on the right. And there we have it. Okay, so now we're going to start to heavy that in on the bottom portion. So I'm just going to, now that I have that, heavy in this guy. This guy. Maybe in that bit. And at this moment in time, I'm actually not going to be able to work out that measurement there. I don't know that little gap in there. Okay, I don't know it just yet. So I can't do that triangular surface as I look down on top of it. And um, so I'm going to have to leave that to later on. But I'm, I am going to start heading in as much of this as I can. So how would I be able to figure out that? Um, first of all, so if that was coming down, that would come all the way to the ground from there. There's that bit. That bit. We've got a hidden detail line because there's an edge running in there. So there's that edge. And then the question we have after that is, how do I find this point and this point here to get that triangular surface, which we're seeing obviously as the edge view up here in the elevation, that sloping surface there. So how do I find that? Now, if you imagine this edge here, the top edge, which I have labeled as number two, if that was to continue down to the ground, I'd eventually get a point out here somewhere. And that's where those guys would actually connect up. So to be able to do that, it's actually quite easy. All I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this top edge, number two, and extend that line until it hits the X, Y line. That's probably the easiest way. And you can see that point right there. Now, if I was to extend that all the way down, that's where number two would extend out to, right here. And all I got to do then is connect that up to there, and from this one to there. Simply a case now, I can actually heavy in that. So heavy in the outside bit, at the outside, and then heavy in. Triangle. Okay, so there we have it. Now, all I've done, and this is the way I always go about the question, is I'm going to leave the pentagonal prism. I understand that there's elements here. If we actually look at the drawing, we can clearly heavy in this line, and it actually shows that we can heavy in that edge as well, but we can't heavy in this. But just the way I go about it, I always leave that until the very, very end. Okay, um, so what we're going to do now is to find the lines of interpenetration. What we're going to do is we're actually going to project an auxiliary view of this actual pentagonal prism first, and then we're going to add in the triangular structure, the triangle equilateral prism cutting through it. Okay, so I've drawn the elevation, I've drawn the plan. The only thing I am going to do is I am going to add in the XY line nice and heavy. Okay, just for presentation purposes, I think it's quite nice and neat and helps to break up the drawing. Elevation here, plan view down below it. Now we're going to set up an X1, Y1, and we're looking perpendicular to that, the directions that the object is penetrating through it. So we can see that triangular structure as a true shape. So this here, all we're going to do, projecting perpendicular, down there, set up an X1, Y1, looking perpendicular at it. Now I'm just looking at the object, it's coming from here. So we need to go out a little bit further, I think. Based on the size, it's just about fitting on my page there. It's about here. As that comes down, go like that. I think that'll be okay. Now it's very close, but that's absolutely fine. Now that there is going to be my X1, Y1. Okay, and everything then is going to project out parallel to that 40 degree line. Now, if you have an adjustable set square, that is very helpful here. If you don't, you're just going to have to do sliding set squares. So all the points that are on the pentagonal prism, I'm going to project all those out. 
So just using a little bit of slide inside squares. So there's a point. I'm going to project out the points on the ground. One. Two. I've got this point here. Three. I've got a point up there. Four. The last one then. Just have to slide my side squares. Have to actually bring it back a little bit. Careful here, Move slightly. No, I'm bringing this one back up to there. Okay, so that is all my points projected out. Extend that one there just a little bit. Likewise with these. Okay, so I projected them all out looking in this direction. Now, all I have to do is also, if I want to label some points, I'm just going to get my, my pen here. And I do always like to label as much as I can. So if I started with uh, some points on the ground, okay, and let's say we've obviously used already number one, two, and three. So starting on the base, I'm going to say uh, number four. Okay, so let's say number four was here. I've got number five, number six, number seven, and number eight. Now, four and eight are still on the ground, but there is a point up here at the top. There's two more points above five and seven. So four and five all connect six, seven, eight. But four is also going to connect up then to a point up here. So after eight, then I would have maybe nine. Um, then have I got another point here at the front? Yes, that would be 10. And I've also got 11. And 11 connects back down to eight, but 11 also connects across to nine. So, there are the points, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. There are the points I want to find. Now, based on my drawing here, because I'm working off an A3 sheet, in an exam in the summer, you would always have the opportunity then where you'd be able to work off an A2 sheet. Um, you can see here I've kind of got a, a short enough distance to the edge of my page. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take away that distance by putting in a datum line. It's not always going to be necessary. It is for me just in this case so it all fits on my page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my datum line right in line with the number 5. So that is just a line there, okay, that I'm going to do my measurements from. That there is my datum line, okay? You can note it on a page as well if you want to do it that way. But what that does is, because I project from the elevation, I'm going to take my distances from the XY line down, but it's allowing me to eliminate the gap inside here, okay, so that I don't have that gap out here as well. Okay, just a little handy technique. So if I start with number four, that is the distance from the datum line, to number four in this case. So from there to number four. And I'm going to mark it out. Should have actually, sorry, I did forget that. Apologies. So number four is here. And then I've got number five, number six, number seven, number eight. And we've got nine up here, ten, and goes back up to eleven. Apologies. So, from the datum line down to number four, I'm going to mark that from number four up here and mark it out. Okay, so there is number four. Number five is exactly on the datum line. So there's number five, I'm going to mark it out. That's actually where number five is going to be. So four to five, now how do I find six and so on? So working my way around, datum line down to six, Take that distance there. I'm going to find six, project it out. Yeah, this is helping me fit this on the page. So there's number six. Continue the sequence. You can measure from the seven up to the datum line. Absolutely fine. Do that way as well. It's on the same line as the five. Mark that out. And now I'm going to go to the eight. Do the same thing. Eight is on the same line as the number four. So you can kind of see the pentagon taking shape there. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, and now I need to find nine, 10, and 11. So nine is actually like five. So if I follow it up, there's nine. Nine is right there. Now I want to find the 10. Follow it out. There's 10. And finally, if I want to find the 11, up to the datum line, 
I follow it up to the 11, it's on the same line as the 9, mark it out. Okay, there is all my 10 and over to the 11. Now, all I'm going to do, I've got it drawn, I want to draw it all in. So I found all my points, so I know 4 connects to 5, 5 connects to 6, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, 8 goes back to 4. That is the base of it done there. Okay, now, what does it also connect up to? Well, I know 8 connects up to 11. Okay, so 8 connects up to 11. So I'm going out at an angle. Okay, 8 connects up to 11. Does 11 connect down to 7 on the outside? Yes, it does. Okay, does 4 connect up to 9 at the opposite side? Yes, it does. What's helpful here is 9 connects down to 5, but that's already done for me. Okay, 9 connects across to 11, but it also connects down to 10. 10 connects to 11. And then 10 also connects down to 6. Now that might seem a little bit confusing, the shape that we've done there. But once we start to heavy it in, remember now we're looking in at the front of the object. So if I come down to my plan view, what faces can I see? I can see the edge going from 6 to 7 and 6 to 5. So straight away, I know I can heavy those in. You always have to position yourself on the object and imagine what you can see. So 6 to 7 and 6 to 5 can go in heavy. Now, if I'm looking in this direction at the object, I can see 6 to 7, 6 to 5. I can't see 5 to 4, 4 to 8 or 8 to 7. So all these three lines here are going to go in as hidden detail. Okay. Now actually, just before I continue on, sorry, I am going to take the distances for the triangle 1, 2, and 3. Apologies, I should have done that. That would have been the first thing I drew. So from 1 to the datum line, that distance there. I'm going to mark it out along that line there. And that is a line that I still haven't actually projected out yet. Apologies. So I'm just going to extend it out. The line is already there. It's just a case of extending it. Just make sure I'm accurate when I extend. And I'm also going to extend this one as well. Okay. Now, as I said, I took the distance for one. Mark that. Let's make sure I'm accurate. There we go. So there's the one. Follow it all the way out. One will be out here. Okay, I'm going to take the distance for two. Well, the two one is at the top. So if I follow that one out, it's here. And finally, the distance for number three. That distance there, follow it out, it's on the same line as the one. There we go. So this was, apologies, I'm not in. There's the two. There is three and one now that is the one that I will put in heavy that's the first thing I should have done apologies one to two to three now I can start heavying in what it looks like so as I said previously I just wasn't sure if I could actually see these lines here so that's a hidden detail line I'm going to work out the base. And remember, always refer to the pictorial drawing that they give you to help you visualize what it's meant to look like. So what I mean by that is referring here to the object up here, okay? So you're working out the side faces. So that's why I was telling you that there's a line running down there, there's a line running here, and so on at the back or side as well. So what other edge can I see? Well, I'll clearly then be able to see the edge on the outside here, which is 11 to 7. which is the same as the edge from 9 to 5, but because that's resting on my x1, y1, I don't have to put it in. Now, the edge from 11 to 8, I can't see, so that's going to go in as hidden detail. That's not being interfered with anything as well. Okay, the same will be with the edge 9 to 4. That's going to go in as hidden detail. That's like that back face that's running down it. Okay, the 9 to 11, that's at the very, very tip top. I can see that, so that will just go in across. Now, what I have to do is focus on the triangle at the front. So 11 to 10, can I see it? Yes, I can, because that's at the front of it. But obviously, that's the one that's actually been cut. Likewise here. 
9 to 10, that's been cut, and the edge from 6 to 10, which is the one running up at the front of the object. That is also been cut. And there is our object. Okay, uh, the base at the bottom, we've got the front face here, the front face, side, side, and then the back face, and obviously it's all sloped and everything like that. So, um, and that is here where the triangle is actually cutting it. And what I should do here is I should put in actually this line here at the very, very back from that edge there, because we do have a little triangle at the very, very tip top. It's hard to see it there, but there would be a triangle up there at the very tip top, because that's where it's been cut as well. So I'm actually going to put that edge in as well. These questions do take a bit of time, not as much as obviously when I'm explaining it, just for the video's purposes, I like to talk it through. So that one will come all the way down. That will actually appear as a straight line. So once I have it down, that actually nearly appears as a straight line. And that's kind of what it looks like there. Okay, that triangle there, this edge here, okay, is the bit here that's actually dropping down. So that's the bit that's actually going down, and then that's the flat part on top, the inside triangle. But really all I'm actually focused on is that guy there. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to note all our intersection points. So to find those, I'm going to start marking them just with a little red marker this time. So what I want to find is any intersection points so I can be able to actually determine where they end up up here. Um, so if I was to find them here, now there is easier ways, and I'll work back here as well, but I'm just going to note all of them in my auxiliary view, because this is the one where I see the true shape of the triangle cutting into it. So number one is obviously hitting on the face, 11, 7, 6, 10. That's one there. So I'm going to call that point A. Okay, so if I work around in a clockwise format, now this one here I'm not concerned with at all, that's just the edge back there, so that's fine. So A then will hit up to this one. That there is going to be... B. Now B is on the line 11 connecting to 10. Perfect. Number 2 then. This is obviously going to be number C. That's on the face 11, 9, 10. Okay, and we can see it clearly there. That's perfect. And then obviously I've got D over here. That's on the line from 9 to 10. Then I've got all the way down to 3. That's hitting on the face 9, 5, 6, 10. So that's E. And then finally we have a point here right on the edge and that one there is going to be f and f obviously connects back to a okay that's all just at the front faces okay and that's on the edge going from six to ten so how do i find all those so i'm going to work one by one and i'm going to see can i find out a to b to c and so so first of all a what do we notice about a a is obviously where the line number one is coming in okay and how do i find how far it goes into that face there because this is the little thing that it kind of gives you a cue to when they give you the original question. We don't know how far it's going in exactly. So how do I find it? Well, I can see one elevation. Here is one of my plan. And what's helpful is the face, which is the 6, 7, 11, 10, which is this face here. I can see exactly where it hits the face in my plan view there. So really easy. It's just a case of bringing it up. That's going to determine to me how far that line actually goes in. Okay. Now that's the quick way of finding it. The other long way you could have done was doing this thing called an element. So I'm going to label that now. There's A. And there's A in my plan. Okay, it was already there. I could have done an element where I connect 11 down to A, bring it all the way down, bring it up and find it. But it was quicker if I just recognised that that is hitting on the edge view there. Now, B. How do I find B? B is on the line from 11 to 10. Okay, so if I want to find that, how am I going to get it? It's on the line from 11 to 10. I'm just going to work backwards from my auxiliary. So on the line from 11 to 10, B is there. D should be the same. Perfect. And it's on the line from 11 to 10. So there's the line from 11 to 10. So there is B. Now, if I have found an elevation, can I find it in my plan view? Yes, I can. If it's on the line from 11 to 10 elevation, it also has to be on that line in plan. So project it down. And there's B. Okay. Now, how do I find C? 
Well, C is actually hitting the face, 9, 11, 10. Okay, but what's helpful here is C is on the line number 2. So if I follow 2 in, it's actually hitting it right there. So that has to be point C. So that's helpful. Now, how do I find it in the plan? I want to bring it down once I have an elevation. And we know it's on the line 2. So there we go. That's C. Right there. Now, how do I find D? What's helpful is D is on the line 9 to 10. So if B and D were actually kind of in line with each other. So as that came back, B and D will actually share the same position because the line 9 to 10 elevation is here. So I'm just going to write B comma D. Okay. But D will be in a different position because it's on the line 9, 10 in plan. So that's actually going to be the position of D. Okay. And now, how do I find E? Very similar to A. It's just at the opposite side. Uh, a or E is on the line number three. Okay, so if we follow that in, it's going to be along there, but it's more than likely going to be in the exact the same position because the object is quite symmetrical. So three, follow it in. That's where E would be. So you can see here we're just walking away around, and where is E in the elevation? Obviously, it's in the same position. I would bring it up. Had I done it properly, in the exact same position. A comma E, because they should be in the same position. Happy with that. Okay, and the last one we have to find is F. Now, F is actually hitting right on the line 6 to 10. So if we follow that, look, there it is. So F has to be right here. It's on the edge from 6 to 10. So when that comes back, all the way there, that is F. Okay, E goes up to F and back to A. And whereas F in the plan view, it's on the line 6 to 10. There it is. A lot of these were actually found already, okay? So it was easy enough. We didn't even have to do any element lines. So how am I going to draw that then? Once again, as I said, refer back here. We want to find this edge here and this edge, and as it works around the back with the hidden detail lines as well. So A connects to B. Can I see it when I look in this direction at it? Yes, I can. B connects to C. So that's where it's interpenetrating it, okay? C connects down to D, D connects to E, E connects to F, F connects to A. So that's actually all we can see. There is no kind of hidden detail lines inside here. And all we're going to do then, I'm just going to heavy this in now, so I can see the top portion. Can I see the edge from 11 to 7 down? Yes, I can. So this is where I said I was going to come back later on. I'm drawing as much as I can. Okay, and then the edge from 10 to 7. I can't see it fully, but I can see from 6 up to F. Okay, so I'm starting to kind of heavy in my details there now. That is that side of it worked out. Now I'm going to work on to the plan view here. And can I heavy in 11 to 9? 100% I can. So if I look over here and I can see it, I should be able to see it here. It's not being interfered with anything. Okay, now, 9 can only be seen as far as D. Likewise, on this side, 11 can only be seen as far as B. Because it's actually been cut away. Now, what I want to do is A connects to B. Okay, B connects to C in the plan view. So I'll look down on top of it. I'd see this here. B connects to C. C connects to D. Working our way around. Okay. Now, D connects to E. Already done. E connects to F. Well, remember, we're looking down on top of the object. So that line there from E to F is actually going to be hidden detail, as is from F to A. So from here, this is actually going to go in as a hidden detail line. Okay. And F to A is also going to go in hidden detail. Now, goes from F to A, totally hidden detail, but obviously the line A to B is already heavy. So I only have to heavy in that much there. Okay, and A back to B. So that's pretty much done there. Um, just working out that, how far was that allowed to be heavy in? Oh yeah, and that's, sorry, apologies, forgot to heavy in this. This is heavy into here, into C. And obviously we still have to find that kind of triangular portion there. And we'll still, we'll work on that. Can I actually do that now? Yes, I can. So, how do I find that triangular portion? As I said previously, this point here and this point here, how do I find them? Where we're actually going to take them from is our auxiliary view. I can take the distances from here, 
okay, and work my way backwards. Because you remember, what we did was we projected from the elevation, we took our distances from the plan. Now I can take my distances to get these measurements out here. We projected from the elevation, but took our distances from the x, y line down. Now I can take my distances here and bring them back. So I'm going to take my distance, and that's the point I want to find right in there and there. I'm going to take the distance from here to that point. Right there. So that distance from there to there. And I'm going to mark it from the datum line, not the xy. Remember I did it from the datum. So there's that one. And now I can mark the distance out to the other one. So that's how we needed that. Mark that distance out to the opposite one. Okay, now that I've found the two of them, I can draw that in. Okay, and you can start to see it's kind of taking shape now. Quite a detailed little drawing these guys are. Okay, so there we have it. And now we're on to the back portion of where the body is being intersected. So if I actually look at the drawing, I actually can head in this line here straight away. Because that face is an edge view. It's actually shown me the face, how would I call the face? 4, 9, 11, 8. That face there, 4 up to 9, 4 up to 9, across to 11, down to 8. In the elevation, I'm seeing that as an edge view, that face. Okay? Now what I need to do is I need to find where the object is kind of coming out of the back of it. Okay? So how do I find that? Um, now, I can find, technically, technically where 2 goes through that face at the back. Now, we focus on the back here. Where that point goes through, it goes here, right through here at the back of it. So, how am I going to find it? Bring it down. That's on the number 2 line. I remember the number 2 is there. So, you can see it there. I brought that down earlier on. That is that point right here. And this place on my marker. There it is. So, that is like the number C as it comes out the back of it. Okay, now, in the back of it, I'm not concerned with the lines 9, 10, 10 to 11. It just literally goes from C down to E all the way over to A. Now, how do I find those points? They're right here. It's really easy. It's literally just a case of projecting this guy down. Like that. So there is, if you remember, A is on the line 1. So there's A. And there's B. Now, A connects to B, connects to C. Now, as I look down top of it, C to E, or C to not B, apologies. One was A, two was C, three was E. So it should be E, sorry. Just in regards to how I've labeled it. So that will actually go in heavy. Just bit here, it will also go in heavy. And this will be heavy down, as far as there, and there. And this will go heavy the whole way in. But also, the edge connects from A to E at the back. So that will actually go in as hidden detail the whole way along. Now, I'm going to put in the edge here. So, heavy that. So that's hidden underneath it now. The edge from 4 to 8 in this case. Okay, and I'm going to put in the rest of my pentagon. Alright. So there we have it, folks. Um, I think I'm just going to check over all of these things here, just to make sure I have all my lines of interpenetration and hidden detail done. And, yeah, as far as I'm aware, I think... That was all the points done. Have I got any? I've got my hidden detail in the plan. I've got my bit of hidden detail here. I'm sorry, just connect that to there. Um, I was always checking over my work here at the very, very end. We wouldn't put in any of this because that's where the object is kind of interfering with it. Okay, so we're not putting in any hidden detail lines there. I'm just showing the edges in here on the plan view in there. Yeah, there you have it, folks. Um, that there was the 2023... Um, question B1. It was based on the topic of intersecting solids. And having actually worked through the question, I've always done it here using the interpenetrate or sorry, the auxiliary view method. There is methods where you can take appropriate um, cutting planes, vertical and horizontal cutting planes as well. That works absolutely fine. It's probably a little bit quicker, but I like to see my understanding over here because I like to visualize then. I think this helps me 
visualize what it's meant to look like down here and up here as well okay but there you have it, folks that there is the 2023 exam question done on intersecting plane or sorry uh, interpenetration of solids okay or intersecting solids hope you found that helpful all right